You know, there are days that I really appreciate my younger years that I worked so many varieties of jobs. One of the things that I appreciate was uh, one of the jobs was being a waiter. <laughs> I learned how to manipulate so many different things that you're carrying without spilling them. And uh, in so doing, it gave me a better appreciation of not only service work in serving others, but also it enabled me to construct things and to be able to talk and relate scriptures as I was either seating or getting seated or, you know, putting a bunch of books down so the camera's elevated and into a different perspective and <laughs> making everything work together for good. <laughs> but studying Proverbs was something that I did in my lifetime when I was very young as a young born-again Christian. And it made me very, <clears throat> I'll admit, pragmatic, made me very practical, gave me a better understanding of how we could arrange our life if we chose to. Now, in America, most people don't arrange their lives. They don't plan it out. They don't discipline themselves. As a matter of fact, they just go do whatever they feel like at the moment that they feel like it. And we've been trained up to get away with that. But God has a plan. He has a design and he has a purpose. If you watch plants, how they grow, or if you watch the geese when they fly, you see things, there is an order to things. And so, Proverbs is one way of allowing you to examine a way you could live if you choose to. So, it's really up to you. I mean, if you're watching this video, then obviously it might be giving you some wisdom, you know, in understanding how to avoid the pitfalls in life. So that way you could be a godly man because you will become sage-like by way of doing Proverbs. And it is about doing. It's not just about hearing. So in Proverbs 3, it says, To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. The reason we have Proverbs is to receive the instruction of wisdom. Now, the instruction of wisdom isn't wisdom itself. See, wisdom itself is that type of knowledge that you add experience to, and as they are brought together, then you hopefully learn wisdom from them. In other words, you stick your finger in the fire, you get burned. You know not to stick your finger in the fire. Wisdom is not sticking your finger in the fire in order to find out if it's hot. So you choose not to do that, and that's what wisdom is. It's the application of knowledge in a personal experience way. So it's doing something and then using your experience from that in order to apply knowledge. And that's what we do in the Word of God, is that as it transforms us in our mind by the renewing of our mind, then as we experience life and we see how the Scripture fits that part of life, that's wisdom. That's a fruit of the Spirit. It is one of the parts of the Holy Spirit's function to cause you to take knowledge and then learn from it by your experience to make it into wisdom. That's what the Holy Spirit does for you. So you can't have wisdom without there being some instruction in it. And so Proverbs is to give you instruction of wisdom, meaning that it's supposed to guide you and to tell you this way go, that way don't. If you do this way, this is what will happen. So part of Proverbs is that, the instruction of wisdom. It is going to give you directions. It is going to advise you. It is going to steer you in certain ways. For justice, people all the time ask me, is this fair? Is God fair? How could God, how could a just God do this? How could God say or do or act or be in a certain way? And I say Proverbs. Go read Proverbs. Read it four or five times. You can find in Proverbs every single aspect of justice, really, if you want to boil it down to, and examine it carefully, and you won't find there being an exception that something isn't covered in Proverbs. Proverbs really does cover all aspects of 
the blunt reality of God himself and godly justice. Not man's justice, because see, man's justice is kind of like a tipsy scale. One minute you got it on this way, the next minute you got it this way, sometimes you got Democrats, sometimes you got Republicans, sometimes you got uh, protagonists, sometimes you got antagonists, sometimes you got this country, sometimes you got that country. It's never an even balance, but the scales of the Lord are just, we're told in Proverbs. And as we read through Proverbs, you'll see, hey, you want justice? <laughs> Proverbs, period, straight up, no problem, you can find it there. In three, it says, and judgment. Oh, Proverbs is about judgment? Oh yeah, because you see, Proverbs doesn't just give you by way of the instruction of wisdom and by way of its justice, it also gives you the instructions of what happens if you do something. And that is what judgment does. Judgment is the result of you having done something and receiving the consequence of it by way of there being a criteria that you were judged by. Jesus said that we should not judge because the same criteria that we used to judge, we would be judged by. So if we set ourselves up as judges, hey, you know, I know how arbitrary you are. You change your mind all the time, don't you? Or do you? Well, I mean, if someone offered you money, would you change your judgment? Or offered you a different set of circumstances or a different set of facts, would you go back and re-examine the truth to see whether or not you were accurate? So what is real judgment? Judgment comes from God. God is the only judge there is. We cannot use our own judgment because man looks on the outward things and God looks on the heart. So if the heart is part of the aspect of judgment, which we'll find out in Instructions of Wisdom, that God does judge the heart and he wants to know the intent and he looks at all these things because that's what Proverbs is going to teach us in the book, then we recognize that judgment is a part of Proverbs. So if we want to know anything, everything, and find accurate judgment, we find it in Proverbs. It's really kind of amazing because literally, as you just heard, we've got quite a bit of knowledge, wisdom, judgment, and lastly, equity. Oh, equity. Equity? You mean equity like in a house? That too. Knowledge of something can give you equity in the eternal life that is to come because it will give you a down payment, so to speak, of something that you're going to reap more of as you go through the experiences of life as they are applied to you, giving you knowledge that's being made applicable to your experiences so that you begin to become wise. And as you become wise, then you are instructed in wisdom so that you become more than just a wise man, you would become a sage. You could become like Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin is considered a sage because he said things like a penny saved is a penny earned. Well, it's obviously not, because really, a penny saved is a penny saved. It's not earned anywhere, because you had to earn it in order to get the penny in the first place. You weren't given a penny, so a penny saved is not a penny earned. A penny is already a penny. So you had to have gotten it by way of some kind of earning with which you had a transaction, with which you were used a penny in order to get that transaction. Then you put it into a savings, which means that a penny saved is a penny saved. But a penny earned would be an interest of the penny if there was interest on it, which Benjamin Franklin didn't say. How do you think like that? Proverbs. You want to know what a Jew thinks like? Proverbs. Although James Minchner once wrote a book called The Source, which he said that if you really want to think like one of the characters in the book, said if you really want to think like a Jew, read Leviticus five times. Straight through. By the time you get done with it, you'll be thinking Jewish. In equity, as you examine Proverbs, you'll see why it's a equal scale. It doesn't say for the wicked only or the righteous only. It says everyone. It isn't about despair. It's about the wisdom and instruction with which to know that God is just, that God is fair, that God is equitable. He is equal in all his dealings. He doesn't make the chosen people exceptional and he doesn't make the Christian exceptional. He deals with the righteous and the ungodly equally. Wow. Really? Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's equitable. The whole world is getting the salvation message. If they participate in it, then they will be saved or shall be saved in the sense of their relationship being developed by way of God opening a door to develop that relationship so that they could come to salvation. But if they don't develop that relationship, 
I would question what Jesus is going to do when he says, you know, you never knew me and I don't know you, and so guess what? You know, I'm sorry, but it doesn't apply for you. Oops. So in Proverbs, remember, so far, as we've seen, wisdom, instruction, perceiving words of understanding, instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, equity. Wow. There's a lot in Proverbs. And we're going to find it daily. One proverb or one verse, as it were, at a time. As we look at Proverbs, as we begin to realize Proverbs was meant to be lived, as we suddenly discover, you know what? Proverbs was meant for you to do.